What up, Tate Schoolers? Welcome to another great episode of Tate School of Fitness, Fitness Corner Podcast. And on today's episode, we have a very special guest, my man, Mr. Claude Whitfield. He is the owner and C and creator of the Backspin slash Cultural Studios in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, I was introduced um, to this brother by my man, Shelton, uh, who is actually a, a DJ and he was telling me about the great things that this brother was doing. And I had to reach out. I had to see if he would be willing to sit down with us and talk to the schoolers about what he do, why he started, what he he um, started the cultural backspins, cultural studios and just his story, period. So welcome today, Mr. Claude. How you doing today, my brother? I'm doing good, man. I'm, I'm doing really I'm doing great, actually. Great, great, man. So I ju- just gonna jump right into it. Like, yes. what, how, what was the motivation be- uh, behind starting Backspins? So for me, my so the backstory is is my dad was a DJ, uh, and and you know my dad had the reel the reels, you know, um, and he 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 did a lot of talking on the microphone, right? So he did a whole lot of talking, but that's where I was inspired at. Uh, from him and you know back in the days you know our our drawers and our kitchen drawers you know it was almost set up like a coffin like a DJ coffin almost Mm -hmm. a different compartment so long story short I called myself trying to create a coffin and you know I ended up getting in trouble getting spanking but my dad said that he said, you have to go to school to be a DJ. And during that time, I'm like, yo, I ain't got to go to school to be, you know, to be a DJ, you know, not thinking he was thinking he was talking about broadcast, you know, radio, you know, mm-hmm. stuff he was talking about, but, you know, anyway, music has always stuck with me. You know, um, I, I've toured, I, I've done a lot of things and, and music has been good to me. And as I began to see how things were shifting in terms of technology, I wanted to make sure that there was a piece of the culture, the foundation of it that wasn't getting lost, you know, in technology, you know. So, so I, I originally, uh, I found it with these hands. Uh, DJ Academy. I found it with these hands, uh, DJ Academy. And over the past, I have with these hands for about 14 years, 13, 14 years now. And um, my heart has always been the young people. You know, that's that's where I'm at. That's kind of where I live at. I always want to make sure that they are, that I can do my part in in giving them uh, this gift and creating a pathway for them in the music industry, because everybody kind of knows that for some demographics, it's either sports or it's either music, you know, mm-hmm. and, and music is not necessarily in the household, is not necessarily looked upon as a career, you know, so I wanted to be able to uh, give these young people an opportunity to chase the dream while they're young and really create a pathway for them to see, like, if this is a real thing that they can do, you know. And and so I create. I've had backspins for for about three years. I, I still have with these hands, but I uh, created the nonprofit backspins um, because I wanted to create a a a three sixty approach uh, to the music industry and touch on all aspects of hip hop. Um, and the music industry, because there's more to it than just DJing, you know, um, it's more to it than DJing. So I wanted to be able to create that, that holistic approach to it and, um, really hone in on the youth, uh, the financial literacy and, and youth entrepreneurship of it all. Like, how do we help this 15 year old kid monetize on his gift today? You know what I'm saying? So that's really kind of the the backstory of how I kind of gotten to up to this point. Um, and, and through partnerships, you know, like uh the actually the culture studios is is a is a rap snacks 
uh, brand. So, mm-hmm. so I have the, uh, so I'm a part of the culture studios and what we do with the culture studios is catered more towards the college students, uh, mm-hmm. where we're working to put, um, studios on college campuses, you know, so we're, we're in the process of actually, that's actually taking place now, um, where that studio on that campus will operate as a record label, you mm-hmm. know, so, so everything that that campus needs to, to be able to put a record out, it's, it's there, you know, so, um, you know, that's the, that's the, you know, uh, the, the short end of the story, you mm-hmm. know, but, but it's, it's for me, it's, it's, it's the youth entrepreneurship and, and financial literacy that we want to create and, and help these students. And we want to do all of that through music, mm-hmm. you know, it's more than just, you know, getting on and writing and like, there's, there is a skill and there is a art to it. And I, and, and honestly, that is being lost too because we're getting caught up in so much of what we see that we're we're, we're not even thinking about like what's real like what they're feeding us is what we're believing is real like yeah. i mean we don't like these kids don't believe that such and such is, is was a 4.0 student in college mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. so showing them like yo like like this is what cool looks like doing what you're supposed to do so you can do what you want to do you know mm-hmm. if music is that thing then here's what it's going to take to do that you yeah. know so that's yeah. the, you know the, the whole spiel man is to, is to really be able to create a realistic pathway for them into the industry and we and we're able to do that through through partners and and things of that matter to give these students real opportunities and create a work ethic that i believe uh is 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 uh has gone away you know they're they're you know i don't want to get caught up in the you know us old heads and all this and how we came up working but that work ethic is lost you know and um if we can push them to to do 80 beats in a week or whatever then we can push that work ethic and get them through get them to that spot uh through music and they, and they not even really think about how hard they're working. Yeah. Yeah. So so that's, that's the whole thing, you know, and and helping them understand that it's not like, it's not a guarantee, like nothing is a guarantee, but we're Mm -hmm. willing to go down this road with you. So you will understand one, you gave it all that you had, you had a fair shot at it, you know, and two, you're still able, we still encourage them. If you want to be a, lawyer or or whatever else you want to be like you can do that too you know we encourage them to do that too so you know that's the that's the whole thing man it's really just honing in and creating a pathway for the for the young people so they essentially getting best of both worlds because you're learning that um you know you have to work a little bit hard to do discipline is freedom right i'm afraid in that the people who are disciplined are the freest people because they can do anything whenever they want to do anything because they put their mind to it and it's done. They set up a, they set up a schedule, they get a system in place and they follow it. Right. And, and, and that is missed on a lot of individuals. Um, you, cause cause it trickle down, you know, we, what we see, we do, right. but a lot of adults as well, you know, it's just like, um, they don't want to put in the work anymore. Right. They want somebody to give them something. But if you are a historian of hip hop, you know it's all about being creative. It's all about creating your own. And to do that through that process, you have to be disciplined. You have to put in work right. because um, it's it's nothing new under the sun. But sometimes people forget. So if you can remind them in a way that's a, that is impactful, right. then you have your own kind of niche mm-hmm. you know um you know when when you say uh well look at a uh a little wayne you know using when he was using the um the the auto tone him and t pain right 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 you got roger and Zep, so it's like that's they just brought it back people right. forget they made it impactful 
Mm-hmm. So that's another thing about hip hop that's so beautiful right. that um, it is in so many ways it's so creative, but it's all the same. If you get what I'm saying, yeah, like it's totally. the thing. so creative, but it's all the same, and mm-hmm. it's all about expression from kids and the hood that was not being heard, and they was getting their voice out, and now them took over the world because hip hop is everything. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah. Everything. Absolutely. And you said something, something really, really key is, is allowing them to get their voice out. You know what I'm saying? Like we so as, as adults, we're so like, you don't know what you're talking about. And, and, and sometimes they may not make sense, but it's going to take for them not to make sense a few times to make sense, you yep. know, because they have to get used to sharing whatever that thought is, you know, it doesn't always come out right. You know, the tone is not always right, but at the end of the day, like we have to look at them and say, they got, they got it out and mm-hmm. then you manage them from that place. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and just being able to listen to that voice and, and, and they'll, they'll share, you know, and, 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 and bringing back goals and, 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 you know, like you're talking about discipline, like, Let's set, let's not set a goal for six months. Let's set a goal for this week. Mm-hmm. We're going to accomplish by this time next Thursday. Let's write that down. Then let's, let's track it. Let's go back next, next Thursday. Let's go back and see what we accomplished. And if we didn't, let's just see why we didn't and how we can this time, you yeah. know? So trying to bring all those things back, I think is, is so key. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. It definitely is. Um, and, and again, you said something about the tone is not right, but at least they have a tone. I always tell people, if if you was to go and not speak for, we just say for a day, sometime an hour, a couple few hours, if you don't open your mouth and speak to anyone, when you, when you first say something, it's going to come out awkward anyway, because your mouth been, right? right. So, this is the same way when somebody express them, themselves. If mm-hmm. it's through anger, through joy, through whatever, whatever emotion, when they express themselves, if they never was able to say it, it's probably not going to come out in a perfect pitch. Right, right. Look past um, how the expression is done and pay attention to what is being expressed. That's it. And that's my that's my biggest thing when it comes to speaking with the youth and mm-hmm. with those who work with the youth is like, Sometimes you got to let go of your um, your hangups and the things that you think is prevalent and what's really important all the time because you have to give them room to grow. You mm-hmm. know, some of us have been lucky, so lucky where we did have space and room to grow and we are who we are today. But a lot of us still in certain areas, we never had that chance because somebody was always telling you to stop. Right, right, right. You know, don't say that. Don't do that. Don't dress that way. Don't. That's not hip hop. Right at all. No, it's not hip. Hip hop is you want to put on every color in the in the book, you put right. on every color because that's how you express yourself. Right. You know, your approach with back spins. That's why I love it because it again, you giving them hip hop and they're thinking, oh, this is about music, but nah, this is about life. Life, absolutely. It's about real life, day over day. How do we, because you can't go out there, you can't just do what you want to do in school and think you're just going to come in here and record. Mm -hmm. One, mom is not having that. And then two, I want to give you this accountability sheet and you got to get the teachers to sign off. I want, like, I want to know what's going on. You know, remember when we was was playing sports, so I played basketball. We had to go every, every, every uh, time before we go and play games, got them accountability sheets and every teacher had to sign off on it. You know, mm-hmm. it's good or not. You know, mm-hmm. and it's it's bringing those 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 old school practices or things like that back into this and and making it and making it fun. You know, we also go through uh, teaching the music business and and things of that matter too. But rather than it being about lecturing all the time, we have a pinwheel. So we put, you know, the, the different names or a personal manager, business manager. You know, those things on the wheel. You spin it, you know, and then if it lands on whatever, opportunity to answer the question. 
Mm -hmm. You know, we have, um, we use it for our financial literacy piece. We utilize uh, real video money, uh, fake video money, but it looks real. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? But mm -hmm. teaching them that, you know, sometimes it's just about showing up, you know, and, and if you show up, here is what you make if you show up. Here is what you make if you if you engage in the classroom. Here's what you make if you do this. Like, and so they're counting it up. And then at the same time, they have their, their bank sheet that they have to go through, fill it in. And, and we do scenarios like, okay, today let's go shopping. You know, well, if you only made two hundred dollars, probably not gonna be smart for you to spend one one eighty five on the new shoes. Mm -hmm. You know, so just to get them thinking that you're going to spend 185 on the new shoes. You don't get paid again until the next class, which is the next week. So your rent or other responsibilities that you have is due in between there. So we, we might not want to uh, spend that 185 on the shoes, but yeah. what else can you do to earn more money right now? Absolutely. So, yeah. You know, including all those things that that, like you said, it doesn't make them think that it's work, but it becomes fun. And they feel like I'm doing like this is a part of where I'm trying to go. And in order to get there, I have to understand these things along the way. Yep. You know, yep. if they're passionate about getting there and doing it, then they'll they'll do it, you know. Yeah, absolutely. I was speaking to somebody earlier about. I think people pay attention too much to the scoreboard and they don't look at what's in front of them. They don't look at the journey. They don't look at the work because the scoreboard don't always tell the truth. Right. That's that what that's when we have comebacks. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, they up, you know, this is over. But right. nobody tell that team that's behind it. They've been grinding harder. They've mm -hmm. been having the workouts. They uh they done sacrifice more parties. Right. Uh right. time studying the other team. You don't see all that until it's done. Like right. it's done until it's done. You need to focus on the work, the journey, love the grind. Right. Some people who everybody quote and, you know, say they slogans or whatever, right. the Kobe world, the Nipsey hustles of the world. These people love the journey. They love you know it. It was the work. Like they loved the work because they knew it was going to happen when it was game time. Right. Right. You know, they knew it. Uh, the Jay-Z's of the world. He knew it. I've been putting in work. You know, I worked J. Cole. I've been, I've been, I was doing reps, writing raps. Right. right? Yeah. <laughs> I'm putting in reps. So I think, uh, again, this, the avenue and the direction that you have, uh, you take these, take with these kids is very unique and very important. And it's close to me because I always tell people I am hip hop. Most of us are hip hop. We grew up off hip hop. All we know is hip hop. Right. Um, even with the R and B, the old school stuff that we also have as well. But we saw how hip hop changed the world. Mm -hmm. Like all it, you know, okay. from its infancy. Right. And some there some individuals to where is that now? Where again, like we said earlier, it's everywhere. Everywhere you look, you turn on your television, our ad. Trust me, you're going to hear a beat. <laughs> and that right. beat is pure hip hop. You know, so it, in, a, in a fashion of um, introducing the kids, not only because I feel like it's very interactive what you do, because they can see the impact in real lifetime of what they're doing with hip hop and making music. Right. You know? So they can actually see, like, oh, such and such did this. And then they learn the history. And then they learn the financial aspect behind it, which a lot of individuals in the industry don't, mm -hmm. right. don't learn about money. Right. You know, not just music industry, just across the board, and especially individuals that look like you and I. We right. don't learn about money. And it affects us in such a horrible way later on in life because we don't realize that it's, it's a tool. Money is a tool. Yeah. It's not a pleasure all the time. It's a tool to get things done. It's protection in a right. sense. Yeah, you know, that's good. We're working hard for, for protection, but so I don't have to worry about certain things because I have enough protection not to worry about those certain things. Right. Um, and <clears throat> again, excuse me, I just think that it's just a, a great approach that you have 
you know, you use your skills and your knowledge to help out the children um, to see the importance of the love that obviously we both have. You hear the passion in my voice. I love hip hop. Right. But that the passion that we both have and the way you introduced it um, is just is very is is genius to be honest i but i feel like it's very genius what you're doing um with the with the children's and the 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 financial aspect and everything and just the spacing and the timing and um <clears throat> getting this all together what was the work behind making this come true backspins like what all did you have to do <clears throat> excuse me you know, I, I like to tell people that um, that for me, like I'm a I'm a bona fide water walker, you mm-hmm. know, and mm-hmm. like like I can't swim in real life. So whatever I got, whatever I got to do, like it's it's got to work. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like I have to make it work. And and it's been, you know, I, I did a uh, I did a TED talk uh, probably uh, in Louisiana, probably two or three, three months ago or so. And, you know, one of the things I kind of shared, it was probably the most vulnerable that I've ever been because I'm kind of a, a low key kind of person, but, you know, it, it was times where, you know, a partner of mine and, and good friend, you know, 300, it was, you know, we have the, the music factory out here, you mm-hmm. know, and, we were in the we were in the building before the music factory uh laid when they first broke ground over there uh we were in the uh the that veggie and beer garden where they played volleyball at like we was in that building and we spent the whole year in that building with no students mm. and rent i mean a whole year with not one student I'm talking sponsor. We was getting sponsorships for equipment and everything. Spending the night in there, putting you know, we creatives. I'm putting my handprints and with paint all in the floor, like you know, mm-hmm. going there, you know, and family spending the night in there. We eating Chinese food and you know, watching the laptop. Uh, but you know, I always I always tell people like like those are the things that people don't see. Yep, you know. Like, like that was, that was 12, 13 years ago, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and doing that and then going, having to make the decision of, you know, I, I'm married with kids and, and having to make decision of, do I stay in this building or do I let it go? You know, you spend a whole year in a facility and you're building and kind of, you know, working with people and having an expectation that, you know, things will move a certain way with your team and stuff. And it doesn't at the end of that, that year, you know, you have to assess the situation like, OK, what's going on? You know, because a lot of money going out and not enough coming in is a loss, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, you know, we, we're we're sitting there and going through that, man. And, and, you know, my wife, she was like, "We, you need to move out, you know, and I wouldn't have you know but this particular moment I listened you know and I Mm. did and and there's something about listening and there's something about timing Uh, and and when I when I did that as soon as I came out of that I I did a a a very nice deal with Park and Rec to go and teach in in their um, facilities and Mm. You know, it's it's been a it's you know people talk about the grind and all that, but it's been a it's been a grind. You know what I'm saying? Like like none of this was handed. You know what I'm saying? Like this is literally when we talk about blood, sweat, and tears. Like this is literally lawsuits, and you know what I'm saying? Like this is it's all of that. You know what I'm saying? But you know, I always tell people that when you're in the people business is priceless. Yes. You know, when you, when you're in the business of, of trying to change a life or, 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 or save a life pending, you know, like you can't put a price on that, you know, yeah. and, and, and you go through the whole, 
Do you charge? Do you not charge? How much do you charge? Are you charging too much? Are they willing to pay? And it's like, you, you can't put a price on it. Like, let's, let's do the work and, and, and whatever we need will come. Mm-hmm. You know? and, and that's been my, my thing. And that's how I've operated. And, and I've been blessed and, and I, and, and I solely believe that it's because I've been able to uh, pour into people, you know, to, to a place where now they're able to, to, to pour into me. And, and, and I'm not talking financial, I'm talking, you know, seeing them doing good and knowing that you played a part is like I mm. said, priceless, but you know, there's been, it's been a, it's been a journey, you know, like people don't, people see where you are now and see all that you have, but they don't, you know, they don't take the chance to like what you're saying, like, what was that like? Mm-hmm. You know? there's been, there's been many moments that, you know, I I didn't necessarily quit, but there was a pause, you know, (laughs) you you have to, you have to sit back and you have to, you know, take a look and and like, where am I right now? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, in and out, you know, what facility is the best facility? Everybody wants to charge, you know, everybody's charging, but I'm not charging, but I don't Mm -hmm. want to like, what's up with that? You know what I'm saying? And it's like, yeah, you got bills, but it's like you ain't making no money off of them. Like our demographic, like they're not paying fifteen hundred for a class. They're not paying. You know what I'm saying? So how so the focus becomes like you got to give it to them. Like, don't (laughs) worry about that. Like that'll come. You know what I'm saying? And, And I just continue to keep going and and doing the work you know, but to, to, to your question, man, it's been a, it's been real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I was telling somebody this probably about a month ago. I said, you know, I don't know if I'm more addicted to the chase or the wins. Mm. Cause mm. I love the hustle. You know, I love to get up and, and get it, have to be creative and figure it out, have to, you know, believe for that next dollar, believe for, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I might not sound right, man, but it, it's crazy because I'm like, I enjoy the wins. I love, like, I love winning. Like, we're all, we're all competitors, you know what I'm saying? I love winning, but I love the chase too. Like, I yeah. like the thrill of the chase, you know, yeah. having to go get it, you know, and I just feel like, I'm blessed to, to 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 go to bed at night and wake up in the morning then then I I, I got it yeah you absolutely. know yeah I, I I have to totally agree the grind you know what people say is the grind I say it's just it's the journey it, it either you love it or you hate it it's nothing else it's not gonna go anywhere right. um, it's here to stay unless you were set up you know where it was easy for you but I'm an individual where it wasn't set up for me to for life to be easy. So it is, I wake up every day, I grind. That's why I post like I post, because I want people to know that I'm up. You know, yeah, you just saw me last night or late in the evening getting the workout in, I do right. whatever, train the clients, but I'm back up because I, you're not going to outwork me. Bad, you, bad you go. Yeah, I tell people, you're not going to outwork me. You're not going to outthink me. Right. Um, because I'm always thinking of ways to elevate our company, to mm-hmm. elevate self. So whatever you have to throw at me, I'm not worried. That's why I say I don't have no such thing. When people always talk about haters and doubters, and right. I don't, don't exist for me. I don't have those because I don't have time to slow down and worry about what everybody else is doing. Right. When you on your journey that you was put here to do, you don't have time for that. Right. If you have time for that, that's not your journey. Mm-hmm. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's well, people. Oh, well, what? Uh, I don't know what I'm do, do. what to do in life. I don't know what's my purpose. If you have time for the nonsense, that's not your purpose. Right. Because purpose is going to put you in places where not saying that you're super busy, you're working to you're exhausted, right. but it's going to put you in places where you you fool. Mm hmm. You fool. Right. So you fool. You don't have time for the craziness. Mm-hmm. Because you're full off of what you're doing because that is your passion. That's right. why you're here. It's really simple. Mm-hmm. 
you're doing the wrong thing. Right. And you have to let go of that fear factor because a lot of times for well, entrepreneurs, it's, it's the fear factor that keeps them back. You have greatness. Right. You have greatness. Um, it's, I'm pretty sure as you was growing up, somebody told you, oh, you good at that. That's that. Hey, you may want to look into that. That's you good at that. Right. And unfortunately, some of us go totally opposite. Mm-hmm. Yep, <laughs> just, that's true. Just because we go totally the opposite the, uh, way um, instead of just stepping into our purpose and just trying it on. Because right. you try it on, hey, it may fit just well. So that's that's one thing I personally had to learn. And people who I talk to, other entrepreneurs, just for encouragement, I always tell them, don't if you have time for all that other stuff, this may not be it. I don't care if you bought the building. Right. If you hired the staff. If you have time for this other stuff, that might not be it. Right. Yeah. You're too full on your purpose. Get mm-hmm. to your purpose. Put in the work. See what happens. Stop counting. Stop looking at that scoreboard. It's right. simple. I can go on and on and on and on because these conversations I had to have with myself. Right. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, because a, a lot of times we don't. So, a, a lot of us don't grow up with that entrepreneur as a parent or as a mentor. Right. And so even then, it's a little bit more challenging because you got to change your entire mindset from just going to be comfortable with hitting the clock to the right. point where you like you say, I get up every morning and I'm ready for the chase. Right. That's those are two different totally mindsets. And there's nothing wrong with a person who clock. I still hit the clock. Right. So it's not, any, it's not anything wrong with hitting the clock. Right. But tr- all day I'm thinking of how I'm gonna get that money and how I'm gonna get my my uh my comfort, how I'm gonna get my protection. Right. Because right. Protection in your hands. Cause mm-hmm. whenever you feel like you're tired of me, you can pull that protection away. Right, absolutely. absolutely. So um I just think again, I, I give flowers and flower dudes before we even started as I told you that I think what you're right. doing is genius. Um right. and Getting it across in the way that you're getting it across is such a major thing and uh, affecting the community in a positive way. Right. Um, and I'm pretty sure you it makes you happy the fact that you can see it because when you're in a people business, you can actually see what you're doing, right? Live, yeah, you know, in, in real time. I, I want to you kind of explained already some of the down points of what your journey, but. What are some of the positive things that has came out of just the entire movement that you have going on? Uh, you know, I, right now I have uh, I have four students uh, between the ages of 14 and 17 who are actually uh, interning with Sony Music's The Orchard, uh, mm-hmm. which is which is amazing to have these students come through uh, the program, come through the academy, and then have the opportunity to intern with music executives, like right now, you know, for eight weeks, once a week, you're on this call with an executive, you can pick their brain, you can come up with a whole plan to release your whatever that you're working on, and, 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 you know, that right there is a, a really big thing. And, and, and that stemmed from, you know, my partnership with, with Rap Snacks. That's probably been, uh, I have been blessed to have a lot of sponsorships and partners, but the, the Rap Snacks partnerships with, the, with Rap Snacks and the Rap Snacks Foundation and that whole thing is, is um, it's probably the, the best one yet, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but other than that, you know, with, with students, you know, I have students that are that are releasing, you know, like releasing their 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 uh, partnering and collaborating with artists in L.A. and they're releasing their videos and, 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 and music. And we're going through, you know, setting up BMI and like we're setting up there's about five of them where we're setting up structure for them to monetize for real 
You know what I'm saying? And, and I always tell them, like, everybody has a job to do. Like, my job is to open the door, get the, get the door open. You know, for you, your job is to walk in the door and network and do your thing. And then the music has a job to do of its own. You yep. know, if everybody does their job, we're good. So, you know, seeing these students be able to create projects is, is really good. And we just recently uh, have uh, two 15-year-olds um beats by jt and uh dj dylan jam you know uh which is very exciting you know i work with their parents very closely and we you know paired them together and and they did their first performance together at the charlotte dj battle you know beats by jt is is finger drumming and uh dylan jam is is cutting to that and they just it's just a beautiful marriage live you know what i'm saying seeing it i'll send you the link to the video for you to see it but uh you know that's very exciting to see yeah. them you know young people come together like that um and dylan jam dylan jam won the charlotte dj battle you nice. know at 15 years old he's battling you know bonafide adults you know he, yeah. he held his own he did it really well so i'm proud of that and then i think probably the biggest one of the all of it's big but another big thing is that you know people like beats by jt um dylan jam and and a few other students like they are in position now to be student instructors and so not only are they in position to monetize off their music gift but now it's how do we create funding for these young people to get paid as student instructors to teach other students you mm. know like that's the biggest thing and greatest thing is to be able to have them have student instructors come through and teach other young people you mm. know at 15 years old and you're teaching a DJ class, at, at, at 15 you're teaching a, 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 a production class, you know, um, that's, that's, that's amazing to me. Yeah. You know, and, and fits right along with us helping them monetize on their gift, you that's know. A, um, yeah. So, you know, I have that. And then another thing, um, so I'll be releasing, this is fresh, fresh news for you i'll be uh releasing a partnership with uh, rob swift uh we'll be doing a music excellence scholarship um right. where you know everything is kind of hybrid now where you know in person and there's virtual so mm -hmm. now there's a virtual um platform for for the backspins music academy on the dj side um and rob, it'll be through uh rob swift that way and then um jt will be able to do the virtual side as well as physical on the production piece but you know seeing them helping them create these projects and putting them in a position to monetize and say okay we're at this phase and sitting down with their parents like mom like this is where we at like mm -hmm. real you know and and mm -hmm. and, and you know being able and i can't forget being able to see them say if i don't do what i'm supposed to do in school i know i'm not going to be able to do this music and i want to do this music so i'm gonna do what i gotta do you know what i'm saying and i think you know for parents and myself like it's like yo okay yeah get That's nothing it. out of it we're gonna get some good grades yeah but, you know and i'm <laughs> cool with that you know yeah. We're not talking back with mom. We not, you know, we're we're learning how to express ourselves, you know. And sometimes that might mean me getting a phone call with them walking outside around the building, like, yo, I'm like, I'm like, at least you outside, and I appreciate you calling me, you know, mm -hmm. up till you get calmed down and you can have a a, a a a conversation, you know, without you know going off or or whatever, you know. And it's been working, you know. Yeah, absolutely. That that's 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 awesome, man. Like again, I say that expression because they can express themselves in such a way. So it is it, such a beautiful thing. It just is perfect. It's a perfect marriage. Um, I wanted to uh, you talk about rap snacks and your partnership with rap snacks. 
how how did that happen? How did that 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 synergy match up? Man, it's I told you like I'm I like all the like everybody has like stuff that they believe in and I'm 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 with whatever, you know, and I don't I don't knock anybody, but for me, man, it's it's been all God, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Cause I like I play the sponsorship games, but when I say like I'm out here walking on water, like like there is a momentum that happens and and there's magic that takes place when that when when I or anyone gets in that rhythm. It's like you can't miss sometimes, you know what I'm saying? And and the whole thing with rap snacks literally was was you know, so a, a backstory of kind of how it how it all kind of works for me. Like my nephew came in one day with a backpack and I said, man, that's a dope backpack. So I did my research or whatever. It was a skull candy backpack. Did my research. Long story short, I reached out to him and they sponsored me. It was like ten thousand dollars worth of headphones, you mm-hmm. know. So it, it's stuff like that, you know, Coca-Cola and Sprite. I'm driving on my way to the school and I get a call from them, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And they come down and sit in the building with a fold up table and no equipment in the room. Mm-hmm. And it happened, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. One of my mm-hmm. biggest deals, you know, ever aside from the, from the Rap Snacks stuff, you know. And, and so Rap Snacks, man, I have a, a close friend of mine. And and I I've, I've looked at rap snacks before, but I was like, man, I I need to reach out to him. So I never did. So a good friend of mine, she was like, you ever thought about you ever thought about doing some rap snacks? It's like, yeah, I thought about it. You know, man. Long story short, I reached out, and it was it was it was on from there. It was like we had been waiting on it. Mm. Yeah. And, and, and it's just a, a, a beautiful thing. And, I, you know, and these are deals where they're not trying to own you. They're not trying to like, it's like you are you, you know, you do you. We, we want you and what you have. We don't want, you know, we don't want it. You know what I'm saying? Like, so um, that's literally how, how it came about. And it's been, it's been beautiful, man. You that's, know? Awesome. that's awesome. Um, because again, especially, uh being in this space to get sponsorships is like gold you know um because a lot of individuals it's hard to get these sponsorships they don't even think like how you was like hmm skull candy let me reach out they won't even have that oomph to reach out and get that no if it's gonna be a no or that yes if it's gonna be a yes because they don't even make that move so right. you don't have multiple sponsors yeah uh, at the time that's that's big in itself right there as well because uh relationships this right. business is all about relationships mm-hmm. period okay. you know it's all about who you know um what you know and what you can do right um, and who you know is huge yes yes sir. Who can get you in some rooms that mm-hmm. you didn't even think about so that's that's a huge uh for us who you know i want to um when you explain some of the Things that was coming up, and I appreciate you telling uh, telling us about the new things that's dropping. Right. But yeah. What is what is next? What is in the pipeline for you and Backspins? Uh, so right now, the 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 next thing that's up is we're looking to do, um, uh, for lack of better words, like pop up classes, mm. you know, and, and really expand. Like if you have an open room we're we're able to come in there and set up to where by the time we're done setting up it's a classroom you know it's no different than than what we have at our facilities um and and really looking at doing that setting that up from from here to riley you know and and, and really expanding we actually uh actually have a a, a backspins miami as well um with a partnership uh, with a good friend of mine out there. Um, and that's going to be with Carroll City Middle School. And they're actually putting a studio in the middle school. Mm. So, you know, the Backspins brand will, and Rap Snacks will be a part of that as well. But but right now, that's our, that's our next thing. You know, maintaining our, our regular classes. We start those back up in October. But uh, maintaining those classes, 
and then going in, you know, in various places throughout Charlotte, open spaces, open rooms, setting up shop, you know, being able to, to, to raise more awareness and, you know, teach more, but also, you know, going on college campuses, uh, setting up shop, seeing where we can infuse ourselves and, 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 and reach more students, you know, and, and continue to give the gift and, 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 and promote our students that are, that are in position to be, to be promoted. Mm, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, so it, you said something about classes, like how many students you average in your classes in each class? I try to keep the classes, you know, but, uh, given all things COVID, <laughs> you know, I try to keep the classes about six to eight. You mm -hmm. know, I, I try to keep them. I don't try to do them too big uh, because I believe, you know, uh, quality. I want everybody. I want to make sure that everybody can get that time from that inspect uh, that instructor, you know, and I want the instructor to be able to go at their pace. Like I don't want them rushing like you're here to we're, we're here to make sure that they get it, whatever that looks like, you know, um, but it's usually about six to eight. You know, I don't try to do do too many, you know. Yeah, that makes sense, because, again, it's just in uh, public education, we see that if you have a whole bunch of kids, they don't get it anyway. Right. So right. You have to make sure that you have a, a, a small base where they can actually hit the instructor and get the right. help, eat, you know, that that's required. Mm -hmm. So I think that's again, that's a great approach to um to be able to handle that and the pop-ups i think that's that's gonna be huge yeah um, yeah the definitely the pop-up and and do that and even here in atlanta i mean because um yeah. I mean, this is atlanta so, <laughs> like, so absolutely say less absolutely say less. yeah be it, you know come there you know there's an open space and there's an avenue to to promote and and, and get the word out and stuff like that open space man we're we're coming we're coming there and we're you know if you got tables then that's even that's one less thing we got to bring but our mm -hmm. thought process is if it's an empty space how do we turn it into a classroom mm -hmm. you know and 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 you know that's where we are you know and and we're 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 heading in that direction like we're we're tracking very nicely in that direction yeah and, and for as a classroom like how much when you setting it up, how how much are you fitting into that space? Like, how much space do you need? Uh, it it it, it normally like a, a regular size classroom. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. it's not a you know I'm not really good at square footage and none of that, but it's uh you know a regular size classroom. You mm -hmm. know, um, mm -hmm. regular size or decent size, we can you know. You know, little IKEA tables. You know what I'm saying? We can we can make it work. You know, six to eight. You know, in there, um, because we're you know, it, it's a it's a workshop slash classes. Like we want to bring the we want to bring the experience there, and we want to bring it hands on. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't want you just just sitting up watching. Like at some point, you need to be able to touch something. And we don't want you waiting in line to touch something, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So um, we want, I, I really want to take that approach because everybody learns different. You mm -hmm. know? So yeah, we can lecture, but if, if, if you're a hands-on person, you're not going to get the lecture. Mm -hmm. you know? So just trying to, and making sure that we can reach those learning styles. So it doesn't take a lot of room, you know, um, again, given all things COVID, you know, the, the biggest thing I guess is if everybody's comfortable. You yeah, know, then then that's really what it comes down to. But but yeah, no, we uh, you know, wherever the space is, that's the mindset. Like we're we're going there, you know, and create a create a young creatives tour pop up or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And we're and we're going there, you know, and we're and we're gonna give the gift and we're you know gonna make it happen. And you know, sponsors will get behind it when when they choose to get behind it. But that's not the you know concern now. The concern now is like. Let's let's go do it. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you have any events coming up? I know classes starting about next month in October, but do you have any events coming up? Uh, no, 
I have, we haven't done any, uh, we, well, we were part of the Charlotte DJ battle. That was probably the first thing that we done. It wasn't ours, but it was the first thing that we've done in a while, you mm-hmm. know, so I've kind of just kind of been seeing just kind of how things are going to shift. You know, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty, I try to be pretty thorough with events. So I would have to kind of like shift my mind to, this is a networking event or this is a meet and greet. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. kind of yeah. skip it down a little bit, you know what I'm saying? But I think uh, I'll let everybody, I'll probably let everybody else focus on that. Uh, mm-hmm. And if we can be a part of what they're doing, um, then cool. But uh, you know, that's really not the focus right now. I, I prefer to to make the classroom experience and, uh, get into the pop-up stuff like I prepare to make those look like events you know what I'm saying? yeah that's a, and that that that's definitely dope because again and the stuff that is an event uh the pop-up and everything because pop pop ups is huge you know um we was doing something similar like uh kind of pop up boot camps and yeah. boot, and it was great turnouts so, like, pop-ups is definitely where it's at. Um, do, for as the future of backspins, what do you see in your future? You know, I, I see us being on, you know, uh, backspins, you know, Music Academy for young creatives being on uh, college campuses, uh, being in, in, in community centers, you know, um, in schools, you know, mm-hmm. really being in, in these in these schools and, and bringing the curriculum and, and, and the arts back, you know, like art, there's, you know, my thought process is, you know, they've been taking the arts out of the schools, you know, like, you know, like we know what else is there for, for us, you know what I'm saying? So they can't afford the sports, like how do we, how do we, how do we, we got to give them something. Mm-hmm. You know? And that's going to be a really uh, a really hard push. But being in those in those places and and inserting ourselves in in places where where there's the need, you know, where it's about meeting the need now, you know. Um, and I think if we do that, the rest will come. Like there's no, you know, the the way the model is definitely with with the pop ups and and that thought process. There's nowhere that we can't go. You know, and and honestly, in my mind, there's nowhere that I probably won't go. You know what I'm saying? If it, if it makes sense, you know, if the kids are there and, and, you know, we can work out having solid people to teach and, and I'm fine with manage it, managing it and checking on it from a space, you know. Um, but, yeah, that's that's, you know, inserting ourselves wherever we can uh, and, and continue to give a gift. Mm hmm. That's beautiful, man. So if the if, if individuals want to contact you, how could they contact you? Uh, you could contact me uh, via email is info at BK spins with a Z dot com. Um, you can shoot me a DM. That's the new email nowadays, you know, um, and, and follow us definitely um, on IG is our is the one that we're mostly on uh and that's uh at backspins with a z well thank you brother for your time um yeah. sitting out with the schoolers and educators on what you do your purpose which is again a phenomenal thing that you're doing great message uh to get the, to just get life lessons through the love of hip-hop and the love of being able to create things with their hands. Um, So that's so awesome because it's a skill that I keep giving, you know, as long as they stay true to it. So I just want to thank you for your time. And I really appreciate you sitting out with schoolers and myself today. And I wish you all nothing but the best. Yes, sir. I appreciate you having me, man. Thanks so much. Yes, sir. I'll be talking.